Hey guys, how's it going? I am, for the first time ever, I am trying using the low latency mode on Discord. Sion from Unexpected Maker, I guess filled me in that just because it says lower quality, I guess that just means limited quality for like resolution. So hopefully 1080p still works. Let me know how it is. I can't actually change it back because once the stream started, it doesn't let you for some reason. How's it going, Yasir? Oh, Marius, that's cool you're here. I was actually just talking about you in the uh, voice chat beforehand. How delayed is it, say elephant? We'll find out. And I said that right about as you posted it. Looks good so far. Awesome. Z has, and Dan just said test. So that sees our latency. Yeah, I can see on the stream side, like when I move, it's probably, it's probably like 10 seconds. So yeah, that's way faster than it was before. It used to be pretty painfully slow. So that is a big improvement. All right, so let me go in here. How's it going, MS, Dave? Nice audio quality, 1080p works, but lower quality. So it is a little bit lower quality, okay. Yeah, just again, let me know if it gets annoying and I can obviously change it for next time. So what I'm gonna do now, just kinda, actually, there's not that many people on the stream yet. So I'll wait a few minutes till some more people join. And then I'll do kind of a quick overview of kind of the reasoning behind this to fill people in who either weren't here in the last stream or came in late or something. And then we can kind of jump into where we left off and then some thoughts for the design as it sits, and then some of the issues that we might potentially have. Hopefully that sounds like that makes sense. But uh, yeah, the thing that we were working on in the uh, voice chat before the stream was just the rotation axis because both of the ideas that we were kind of working on last time rotate the plate not in the dead center axis. So that means the kinematics are going to be also moving the PCB XY and theta. So with this being manual, if you're like, oh, it's perfect, I just need to adjust the angle by a couple degrees when you adjust the angle by a couple degrees, you're also now skewing it X or Y. So then you kind of have to keep going back and forth, which if it was completely going to be vision controlled, that's not an issue because you have the kinematic equations, but when your feedback is your eyes, it kind of is an issue because you kind of have to guess. Are you gonna make a Discord channel focused on it? Would be cool. I mean, I don't have the greatest track record of actually finishing or building the projects that I talk about on this channel, so we'll see how it goes, and we can we can go from there. But I guess, to be fair, it would be kind of interesting, this whole kind of project, because for, like, this niche, there really aren't any things out there. One thing I did actually want to... Uh, look at is whoops, the uh, semi so there's what are called semi automatic stencil printers and they usually will still have manual alignment but they have a squeegee that's auto controlled or at least pressure controlled so i wanted to see how they're doing the alignment open source pcb stencil your version of the open source pnp like i've said before man i would love to build a pick and place, not to have any goals of it being like useful or being like something I would use just because I think it would be an absolute blast. 
rotation would create a bit of hassle. However, getting the PCB center in line with access also causes issues. How's it going? I'm glad. I'm glad that you're here. Someone with the name CNC in the username guarantees that I'm in a better place than I was without it. Marius, I'm doing camera alignment on mine. You are? On this one? Or do you, do you have a different one that has a camera in between? Because kind of what we were talking about in, the, in this one, ooh. Are you using OpenCV or are you using like raw OpenCV or are you using something that is already vision based with linear systems built in? Like how custom are you going with it? Core XY gantry with camera. OpenCV. Yeah, because that's what we were kind of talking about with the... Uh, in the uh, voice chat is no matter what way this is done, like with what MSCNC was saying, even if we did a rotation that is like yours to where the plate that holds the PCB rotates, you are required to have the PCB centered around this plate, like with inc oh. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Whoops. Can you hear me, anybody? Hello? It works for you now? Okay. Um, yeah, so maybe doing the ultra low latency is a little too aggressive. Maybe I should do, yeah, it still says it's lagging on my side. How about now? Is it good now? Because I'm getting all kinds of errors on my end. But I guess it's fun. Okay. So yeah, what I was saying is even if the plate rotates, if the PCB isn't dead center on this axis, like with 0.1 millimeter precision, it's still going to have an offset on that rotation. So adjusting this by hand, by eyesight, is going to be really hard to where if there is a vision system in place, that can account for all of that based on like the kinematics of how the rotation works with the XY. So yeah, I don't know. What sucks is if I do end up or we figure out that having some sort of vision on here automating it is required then this almost becomes just as time consuming to set up as our big printer and it makes this not quite as useful for us here i mean it still does but but Maria, so my question, you added rotation, so I get that. You didn't have to care about manual alignment. But isn't it hard when you are looking at the PCB by eye, if you go to move it X, Y, you get it close and aligned, then you have to rotate it a little bit since your PCB isn't guaranteed to be dead center on here it also moves again in the X, Y. So then you're basically battling a little rotation, a little X, a little Y, more rotation, a little X, more rotation, more X until you finally get it. That's what I'm kind of concerned about because unless you can decouple theta completely from X, Y, it seems like that would be an absolute pain. 
You can just modify the controls to take into account the dynamics though. I can if the all axes are on the same plane. If the rotation is on the bottom and everything else is up top, since the PCB, you don't know where it's going to be centered exactly, that rotation is going to be different every time. But yes, if all movements, if all motion are on a single plane, I think you can still add that in. So that's what I'm that's what I'm wondering if it wouldn't be kind of the best bet to go with. So I guess there's it's funny the uh the last stream doing this, I was like, oh, there's not going to be like anybody here. And it ended up actually being fairly popular as far as my streams go. And now this one, there's like less than 10 people. It's just kind of weird. Same time, same everything. But yeah, just a quick kind of recap with the gist of this. So basically, we have a big industrial printer in our assembly line, which you can kind of see the oven for. And it's an absolute beast. It's like a two, 3,000 pound machine. It can do thousands and thousands of boards in a day. Like it's amazing, perfect alignment. It's amazing. The issue is we primarily do, we're a design shop. So we're doing 10, 20, 30 different revisions, designs, assemblies every month. And setting up that printer, putting the paste, putting in the program can take 45 minutes, just not worth it. And instead, we use either two people, one holding the stencil, we'll use a cheap stencil uh, printer, which kind of sucks. So the goal with this is to kind of be an in-between to where ideally load the stencil in, put the board on the plate, the stencil will move perfectly parallel in the Z direction to keep from smearing paste as it pulls up at an angle. And then presumably manual alignment, just because again, it's fast. So you would literally put the PCB in, put the stencil in, lower it, adjust it, then print it. The fear I have with adding vision to it, now you have to set where the fiducials are it has to go make sure it can find them. Maybe one of your fiducials is messed up. Now you have to keep adjusting it. Now you have to keep adjusting it. Oh, the lighting's off. Now you have to adjust it. And it ends up taking 20, 30 minutes anyway. So that's kind of the issue here. The whole goal, I don't really care cost wise. I mean, it can't be tens of thousands of dollars, but I'm not trying to make something dirt cheap. The whole goal with this is super fast to get set up and having it lift perfectly in the Z direction. And that's pretty much it. If it can do those and it only takes like five minutes to get set up per design, oh my gosh, that would be such a game changer for us. Is it even possible to avoid what you described? I think no matter the system, unless the PCB is perfectly centered, even if the mechanism works around, rotates around the center, that PCB may not have the same center. Yes, agreed. That's what I was just getting at when the connection kind of jumped out. Even if this is rotating perfectly centered, you're not going to guarantee it being around the center. So yes, I agree that, that what I was saying probably isn't feasible and maybe it's not a big issue. That's just kind of what comes to mind. Oh, hey, yeah, hey, going alignment. Yes, if it's auto aligned with Oh, it looks like the stream is lagging again. I'm just going to keep talking and maybe someone says something. But the issue with the vision is all of the complexities with vision to where it could not find it and you end up having to, yeah, it's not streaming good, I don't think. Okay, one solution comes to mind, but the device footprint would be rather big. Have a stencil move in and out separately from the board, load the stencil, grab photo from camera, then align the board. You don't need fiducials, just look 
into the stencil holes. If stencil position would be repeatable, then you could do manual vision. Just wait, Marius will release a blockchain based solution. GoFundMe for Kyle to get fiber. Man, my uh, speed here is, is pretty good. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably something set up on OBS that's screwing me up, but who knows. I did manual vision and the PS4 controller controlling it. The alignment takes like four to five seconds. So Marius, then big picture here, is what I'm talking about just a non-issue? if it is rotating and moving a little bit in the X, Y direction, just by looking through the stencil apertures, it's still pretty easy to align. And I'm basically making a massive deal out of something that's not really an issue here. Because <laughs> if so, that would be pretty nice. And it makes this whole theory still, or this whole idea, hopefully be feasible. He says yes. Okay, so then I guess the plan kind of stays with what the original plan was. But yeah, what's interesting, at least I think is interesting, is like the industrial style semi-automatic printers. And these range from five to 10, 20 grand. Is, it still is manual alignment, but it's automatic control for the stencil. So basic, uh, the squeegee. So basically you set the pressure and speed of the squeegee and it does that automatically because that's something I'm gonna, if this comes to fruition, I'm gonna make some videos on. A lot of people, I would say, almost everybody you see like showing or doing how they put paste on, do it wrong. You don't actually like squeegee the paste, like you don't smear the paste you roll it, it should make a bead and just roll over the apertures instead of smearing it. And that's why having the squeegee controls is really nice. But once you kind of know how to do it by hand, I don't notice that ever being an issue, but it's just something interesting. I printed a holder for my webcam so I could just hold it over the holes. That makes sense. I'm doing squeegee as well, just don't know how to spell it. I know it's one of those things that's super, super difficult to spell. I've always struggled with it. So then with that said, then yes, I agree. I think that makes sense that I'm making something that really isn't an issue. So then basically it comes down to right now I see two main designs that make sense. So the first one is 10 fevers, which is basically double linear actuators that can obviously move in the, we'll call this the Y direction. And then to adjust theta, it slides on a linear rail here and allows theta adjustments. The obvious, not issue, but the obvious pain here is this doesn't account for any x rotation or any x linear motion so the stencil frame up above would still have to have the ability to move in the x direction so we have to have motion on two different devices i'm unable to do paste application for half a millimeter what doing like by hand or what do you mean the other option is Ahid has been coming up with a few different designs, which none of them are like super refined yet, but I think it's a pretty interesting, actually a really interesting idea. So for the sake of this example, ignore how this bottom plate would be supported. Just assume that it's magically under enough tension to where it stays perfectly rigid because we have some solutions for that. But basically this rod would have a motor that can drive this rod here and here. So it can allow, or it can move on the rod, moving the plate left and right. So that gives us X axis movement. Then where the green is, those are driven motors, which control these belts, which are fixed in the corners. So if both of these move in the same direction, same speed, it will go in the positive Y or the negative Y. Then if you want to have rotation, this 
moves in one direction, this moves in the opposite direction, and it can pivot. So what's nice about this is this gives us the ability to have x, y, and theta in one, uh, in one fixture. So we don't have to have a stencil that also can move in one direction. The issues with this are obviously the rigidity. There's going to have to be some sort of support system under here. And then the other issue is this doesn't, at least I don't think, allow us to make a lot of movement in the y-axis because you're going to end up getting too tight when you get over into the outskirts of it. And the issue with that is if the stencil lifts uh, up and down, Oops. the stencil lifts up and down, the PCB is here. Depending on how high this gets, you can't really reach your hand in very easy to get the PCB. So ideally it would slide out to you, which this may or may not allow you to. With a stencil, mind you, too much paste is applied somehow. Are you using frame stencils or foil stencils? That's the biggest improvement. If you go from a just a foil stencil to a frame, it's a massive improvement. So with the rigidity idea, the easiest solution is basically you have like four roller bearings which have we had looked them up on mcmaster last time i completely forget what they are called they're like bearing plates or something bearing a uh, flange just foil i assume the frame keeps it from warping the frame helps in like a million different ways but yes the biggest is a foil stencil isn't under tension so it can shift it can adjust it has to be under tension but yeah just order it with a frame you can literally put it on a flat table use some clamps and just clamp it down and it'll be way better than anything you've done so yes we would use something like this so basically we would just have four of these somewhere out here so it can just roll on that. And then when it's aligned, we would also have an electromagnet that would activate and grab it, and then it would hold it tight. So I think we can work around, I think we can work around that on this design pretty easily. I just worry the kinematics and the kinematic equations are going to be an absolute nightmare because this is not a design that I guess the closest is a core XY, but it's not the same. And the Y motion isn't going to be amazing, but I love that all the motion is in one plane. So I really like that. Possibly dumb question. Does the X axis need to stay perpendicular or can X axis motion angle rotate with theta? Yeah, theta is at least over here in the States, like engineering in school and everything, theta is always just colloquially known as rotation. So yes, when I say theta, I'm talking rotation. So Tim, when you're saying the motion needs to stay separate, that's what I've been saying would make it easier for adjusting. But Marius is saying that even if it's askew, it's still pretty easy to align by hand. So maybe it's not a huge issue. I mean, I think it's better to have it, but because your design isn't, your design in theta is still moving in the X direction some because it's pinned over here instead of dead center. But the kinematics on this are going to be much, much easier than it will be on something like this. At least I would assume. And let me look up actually a actual core XY printer or just a core XY. Whole X, whole Y assembly, Y rotation could be placed on X assembly. That's funny. Both of you came up with the exact 
same thought at the exact same time. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I didn't think of that. So literally the X axis could be just on or below this. Yeah, I didn't think of that. That obviously would work. So that gets rid of that issue that I had with this, with this option. So here's a Core XY printer. Then the X axis moves with the theta though, which feels weird. Yeah, but again, what we've been getting to is no matter how much we try to decouple X from Y and X from theta and Y from theta, I think it's always going to be there just because we can't guarantee that the stencil or the frame is going to be centered at any given point. In, in any way, it's always going to be related to one or the other. And I think that's just, I mean, obviously the less it is, the better, but. I guess I'm differentiating by X move with theta changes. No, I get what you're saying because if we do, if we put the X axis on here, then when this theta is rotated, now if we move it in X, it's going to be significantly more coupled to it. I, I totally get that. But my point is, while we can get close to having it decoupled, we never can actually get rid of it. So is there not a way with a Core XY can we not have this do rotational adjustments? Because if this is floating on here, couldn't these rotate and then that would be around the center? I don't know, maybe I'm just not seeing it in that drawing. It's been a while since I've looked up Core XY. Oh, because they have these on linear rails. They're not floating on a uh, belt like a Heed's design. So that's what fixes the theta. It needs to be rigid, otherwise Core XY doesn't work. Yeah, because then it would be rotating on that side. Yeah, so Core XY is close to a Heed's, but it's not. Yeah, it's the stupid theta that really screws everything up. So then, Marius, for your vision uh, solution that you're doing, is it like how like a real printer is like ours, where it has a single unit that goes in between the PCB and the printer, and it has a camera up and down, and then it sees what the offset is between them? Because that's how like industrial printers work. So it's a single camera unit that sees them both at the same time. There's always the option to just add a boring rotational table to a normal XY movement linear rail system. So that, again, keep in mind, that is what the other option always is, is that's what Marius did here, and it has just a rotational plate on a standard XY. Yeah, like Marius' design, exactly. Actually, it would depend on what do you want to achieve in, in kinematic stack order will define motion. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can say, I'm going to use one camera for inspection and one camera for alignment. But how can you use one camera for alignment? You have to see the stencil and you have to see the PCB unless you're going to, like, rotate them. MSC and C, yeah, but that's the problem. If you adjust X and it's perfect, then you adjust Y and it's perfect. Now you adjust theta. If theta is also dependent on x, y, which, again, I think what we're getting to here is every solution is going to, then when you adjust theta or the rotation, it's going to move x and y. 
So now you have to go back and adjust X and Y a little bit after you do rotation. Again, Marius said this wasn't a big issue, but that's just where my thought process is here. Because what you just said, X, Y, then rotation, that's what I would ideally love to do. And if rotation was completely decoupled from X, Y, that would be fantastic. What was the question again, Marius? So you're saying you're using one camera for inspection or for uh, or, uh, alignment. How does that work? You have a fiducial on the bottom side of the stencil and then the top side of the PCB. How are you using one camera to see both of those? Unless are you using like a drill hole through the, or like an aperture hole through the stencil instead of an actual like half etched fiducial? Because like on a big printer, it's a half etched fiducial on the bottom side of the stencil and that's how alignment works. So it's a single camera unit that has an up facing camera and a down facing camera. I wish I could get a setup to where I could do a stream and like walk around here and show you guys how the printer actually runs and how it aligns and everything. I think it'd be pretty cool. But I don't really have a way to do that at least not that I know of I just look through the pads when you use the camera that's what you're gonna do that's not gonna work because paste gets on the pads after each print if you're doing that with manual alignment obviously that's fine but I'm assuming you're going to have issues. That's why, again, these printer don't these printers don't do it like that. How about adding alignment lines, holes, and stencil? Yeah, there will be. You'll be able to look straight through the apertures to see where the uh, pads are on the PCB. So it'll be super easy to see alignment. It's just without the rotation decoupled, it's going to move X, Y, which again. Marius said that wasn't an issue, and I'm just overcomplicating things. So I think I think we're fine. That's just my thinking. Well, this is showing rotation. This is the trippiest looking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like it's like fluid motion, like everything's running into each other. I don't understand what the concept is here. This is so funny. But this is exactly what I was saying. A core XY printer with belts here gives you the this is so weird core xy with belts essentially give you a heeds design except with this modification this is wild does it give any more explanation like because this is not like a normal core xy oh. How about, I mean, something off-board area to quickly align rotation and then dial. The problem is the rotation's minuscule, like tenths of degrees here. I'm not quite sure what we're working on right now, but what if you were doing a vision system, if you had one camera that can image the PCB when it is loaded and Y-axis fully extended, then another camera that sees the stencil. Yes, something like that would work. Here, give me one second. I'll show you how, like, an actual printer aligns like the fiducial so at least we can be on the same page with that
Okay, so this is going to be a complete pain to try to show because I don't have anything other than a full-size frame stencil to show this. But I will do my best. Okay, so, and I'm not saying, again, that this is how every printer out there does, but 99% of industrial professional printers, this is how the alignment is. So on, and this is a industrial professional stencil size. It's 29 inches by 29 inches or like 730 millimeters, I think. So there's obviously two sides. This is called the board side. And this is the squeegee side on the oh this is so hard on where are they on the on the board side there's a half etched so it cuts halfway through the stencil a little fiducial i don't know if you can see it but it's right there right there so it's a little dot that's halfway etched through on the bottom side or on the board side of the stencil. Then on the other side, there will be your standard fiducial that's on the solder mask, just like that. So basically, so basically the way it works is the stencil is up here, the PCB is here. The fiducial for the PCB is obviously upwards, so you can see it with a camera down. The stencil, its fiducial is down here, so you can see it with a camera facing upwards. Then they will take, like on ours, or every other professional printer, will have a camera unit that goes through here, has a camera facing up and a camera facing down. It finds the fiducial on the screen, it finds the fiducial on the PCB, and it sees what the offset is and then can correct. It does it at one spot, two spots, and then usually a third spot. So that's how it's done. What Marius is saying with using the aperture can work, but the problem is if it's not 100% clean, there's going to be residue, so you pretty much have to clean it. I mean, in theory, I guess every board, but you probably don't have to. So I can see how that can work. But again, the ideal setup is to use a aperture that does not have paste through it or on it. So it stays completely clean. So yes, what Mario said, I'm doing it like humans do. He is looking from the top side where the aperture is and aligning it with the copper or the plated copper that's on the PCB. So that works, but again, having it to where it's not pasted is obviously going to be better because you don't have to worry about it getting smeared with chat, uh, chat with, uh, with paste. So does that make sense? I know we've gotten on a massive tangent here, but for the vision system, Hopefully that explains kind of the, uh, the gist of it. And again, my goal here is I really don't want to have vision on it because I just fear then this isn't going to be any faster to set up than our big printer. And no way, shape, or form is this going to print as good as the big printer. I mean, it's a almost a hundred thousand dollar printer. So I would hope that that is going to print better than this printer. But the goal is for it to print really good and take no time at all and just be able to print. I've done 10 at a time, did not adjust. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's cool. Yeah, as long as you can have a clean aperture. Um, yeah, I can see that working. Okay, so then so, Ahid, what do you think of this setup? Because this is essentially yours, but 
it moves the motors all off here, which I think is really funny. Though, I don't think this... Oh, because... Yeah, I'm not following the kinematics at all here. This seems really trippy. That's 10. What you just said is what I've been wondering. How does it do x-axis? Because if there's only two motors, we don't have enough options to do x, y, and rotation. This is, like, hilarious, though. Because it seems like in order for it to do X, it's actually lowering at the same time. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's just confusing me. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand that. And I, I think Craig might be right. It might be showing some of the... Uh, the slop with it yeah russian technology no no kidding because <laughs> yes a standard core xy does not have does not have rotation oh here's a supposedly a better site that i was just sent by fabio So this is core XY. So I get this, this makes total sense. When one motor is moving alone, it moves X direction. When both are moving together, it moves Y. Or if you move them at slightly different speeds, then you get Y and X. So I got that, makes total sense. So now what is this? Oh. Yeah, I mean, they accomplished the same thing, I guess. Oh, to get it to move X, they move in opposite directions. I w Sorry, I was wrong. One motor goes back and left. Yeah, it goes back and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my fault. It's based on the direction of them. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess we're... Core XY... So yeah, we're pretty much now at the exact same spot where we were last time. So I think for the sake of, at least for this initial design, this revision, whatever we're calling it, let's just, I think I already have that open. No, I guess not. I think for the sake of this initial design, this initial revision, Let's just make the assumption that what Marius is saying is going to be the case for this, that any sort of X or Y motion when we try to rotate, while obviously not ideal, it's not that big of a deal. We're only talking about a few millimeters here tops. So let's ignore that it's not going to be rotating down at the center point. 
With that said, that means we've got a few options. One is we do this, the X action, the X axis motion could be with the stencil, it could be under here, doesn't really matter. The other option we have, you can always add vision later. Yes, that's my plan. That's why I'm trying to avoid vision right now being like required because I just wanna see if this works, see if there's a use for it. And then if it is, and I think we can do vision without it being super time consuming, that'd be awesome. Then we've got a Heed's design, which not that one. That's one he had sent and we realized would not work. We could do a Heed's design here, which the advantage is it easily has all of the motion on a single plane. Or we could go with something like Marius. I think if we do this, I think it makes sense, if nothing else, just because they're cooler is do an X, uh, a, a core X, Y. So we would have something like this, but then we would have the rotational plate right here. And yeah, I mean, really, it's just cool that the core X, Y system, two stepper motors. So we would have three stepper motor, three stepper motors total for X, Y, and theta. And then whatever on the Z axis doesn't really matter. My new machine has super little X, Y movement and just more lift to access the board. So, and that's, that's the other question. And this is what I had alluded to earlier. The advantage with like core X, Y is in what they're calling the X direction. It can slide the board all the way out to where you can drop it in. It moves it back to the stencil. It's done. It moves it back to you with a heads design. It is not really going to be able to, I don't think, move all the way in this direction. So you have to place the board deep inside there. With what Marius is saying, his stencil just lifts super high. So that's what he does. The advantage of that is now we're limiting that motion to very, very small amounts. So it makes everything else easier because you don't have to move it that much. Because keep in mind, again, I don't know how many people have experience doing stencil printing. We're talking about the stencil is going to go on top of here. And based on just the home location of everything, it should never be off by more than a couple millimeters. So we're talking to align the stencil. It's going to move like a millimeter here, a half a millimeter there in like a degree of rotation we're talking about very small motion. Like on our big stencil printer, I think the maximum it can move is either five or 10 millimeters X and Y, and then like five or 10 degrees. So it's like, these are going to be pre-aligned pretty well. It's just, we need that last little motion to do the fine tuning. It was just easier to lift it higher so my machine can be smaller footprint. Got it. And that's another constraint that I don't have this can literally be as big as whatever. I mean, there's an entire section over there that is devoted to like clean, like cleaning stencils, printing manual, loading paste, and it's an entire table. So once the other manual stuff is removed, I have all the space in the world. So that's not really a big deal. I also do not do 360 degree anymore. That's smart. Yeah, because why in the world does this need to move 360 degrees when, again, it's just moving to super fine-tune adjust? So then, what is everyone's thought on kind of what idea makes sense? Me personally, just because the kinematics are super well-known and they're out there, I kind of like the core X, Y with a rotational plate up here. Just be careful with long belts and tension. True, but keep in mind for this first iteration, the feedback is my eyes. So backlash isn't really a thing. Um, adding vision obviously would be nice or 
having no backlash with vision would be nice. MS, CNC, I would avoid belts. Oh, well, there's two belt, two votes to avoid belts. Okay. And with tiny motion range, it should be as stiff as possible. I can get on board with that. So then let me then do another question. This option, I'm totally biased, so I'm going to recuse myself. No, I definitely still want your your thoughts. So, did I exit out of yours? Apparently I did. So then one question I have here is using this. So one of the big advantages with this option does not matter with backlash as long as there's no free movement when you have active alignment. When you have no free of active alignment um well yes but i would be doing vision most likely how this printer does it where it's looking at the fiducials beforehand so backlash would matter in your case no backlash is irrelevant because it's checking in real time but i think something cool with that marius that maybe you could look into why not do all the way through fiducials and just put them, oh, you can't because paste would still go through them on the edge. Never mind. But yes, if you do active alignment like that, then backlash isn't a thing. I wasn't voting no belt, just a reason to not make them longer than they need to be as a counter to your can be as big as you like. Yes. Manual milling machines have a ton of backlash. Yes. Because backlash when you're looking with your eyes is just a thing you have to remember. It doesn't really affect anything. So then my question with tin, with tin Fever's design, one of the really big advantages with this that I like is it easily has the ability to do what I was saying. If the stencil is centered over here, it can bring you the plate, you put the stencil, you put the PCB on, and then it pushes it all the way back. So you don't have to lift the stencil super high to reach in it does all of that built in if instead we say that that doesn't matter we go with what marius was saying we're going to lift up the stencil five feet in the air obviously exaggerating but we're going to lift the, the stencil super high to where we can reach in easily and place the board dead center that now means that this motion is utterly useless and we're only going to be moving 10 millimeters in X, 10 millimeters in Y, and 10 degrees in rotation, does that mean that this is just utterly overkill and we would be better off going with a super simple, super compact, just standard X, Y with a plate that rotates in the middle? Or do you guys think that this still is nice and just maybe shrink it down? Because I do see what Marius is saying, just lifting Z higher to be able to make all of this way less motion makes sense to me. I mean, again, that's how a real printer does it. Because basically we would just get something super small like this that just gives us very minimal x y motion and then have the rotational plate and call it a day what's funny is going on now what three hours total this hour and then the last two hours stream going through tons and tons of different ideas, it would be pretty funny if we end up going with something like this. And that's exactly what Marius's original design was that this was all based off of. It's like, yeah, it might have even been easier to just do what he did, but it was fun. 
I could see that if only need 10 millimeters in each direction, doing a simple and small X, Y, and rotation makes sense. There's less unknown doing it that since it's been done before. Marius, yep, that's what I figured out. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. I mean, it's definitely not as exciting because, like you said, this has been done a million different ways. Ooh. These are used for, like, microscopes, I believe. XY table. A six-axis <laughs> robot arm. Yeah, no kidding. Just let them do all the work. So are any of these... None of these are servo driven. I mean, obviously we can swap that out with a servo or a stepper motor. You were just looking at Google. Because the problem is the second it has the word microscope in front of it, it's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I just desperately needed a machine the day after, so it went with everything simple. That's the other thing is this isn't a mission critical device. I think it'd be really, really useful and maybe even have a use as like an open source project for other people. But no, there's no like, oh my gosh, I need this now. Oh, request a quote. That's nice of them. God, that would be nice because this I mean, to be fair, other than this looking really cool, it actually doesn't accomplish anything more than just a standard gantry like this because it's basically just an enclosed version of it. But it does look a lot cooler. Must be cheap, yeah. When request for quote, just add a couple zeros to what you were expecting it to be. So then let me um let me see if I can do real quick like a do like an online vote thing and actually let me do this second one. So let's do the simple x y Is it EI? EI, I think. My bad if I'm wrong. And then. I think that's it, right? Simple XY gantry with rotation plate, a heats design, 10 fevers design, or other. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so go ahead and give me a vote on this. I am going to vote. Actually, I'll wait and see what you guys do. Oh, no. I can't see the results. Oh, maybe if I vote, I can. Okay, good. I was going to say that would be a pain. So obviously one of these votes I did for other, we'll ignore that, but we'll see what people say. The smallest movement on an eight millimeter Acme screw and micro stepping is just ludicrously small. Yeah, that makes sense. So then Marius, what like gantry setup did you use? Did you use that same like open rail, I think you called it, or who, what's the setup you used by? Because I was thinking of just doing like aluminum extrusions, but if it's like a pre-kit type setup, that would obviously make things a heck of a lot easier. Off topic, what is app is that that you're using for Discord and Slack? So it's called Rambox, and it holds 
my different Slack channels, um, all the messengers, like you can do tons and tons of them. It's amazing in theory, but no joke, yesterday I was looking up alternatives to it. It can't update. So like I've had this on four, I think I have it on four computers right now. Every time any of them need to update, it's a complete disaster. I have to like completely uninstall everything. I have to like manually uninstall like registry stuff just to reinstall it. So no, when it works, probably an eight out of 10, nine out of 10, it's fantastic, but zero out of 10 when you have to update it. And it gets so behind updates that then it just says, I don't think it's going to run anymore. So big pain. Combination of Tin Fever and Marius's would be other. Yeah, I think so. So then what is... So we ignore one vote on other. So then MSCNC, what is the TLDR of what you're thinking combining tins and the XY gantry? Something I just thought of with me trying to think of what you're talking about, and maybe it's exactly what you're thinking. What if we added a third? Uh, one second. Let me find a better one I can draw on. This will work. So what if on, so this moves, actually this is a terrible, terrible picture. I'll do this one. Just why, why are none of these pictures blown up? Like, come on guys. Okay, what if we did this? So obviously, this can move in this direction. We'll call this, I guess, X. It can move in Y. Super easy. That's the whole goal of this. What if we also had... Yeah, I guess what if it is Tin Fever's design, but instead of... Yeah, I guess I guess just still have the the pin here and still have the sliding rail there, but just have it directly floating on the other axis. So then we can get theta on this rail also. I mean, I guess that's just Tin's design in theory, but uh, what do you say? I think my design is the coolest, of course, but I'm honestly going back and forth with the simplicity of an XY table with the rotational table. Combination of tin fever and my two things, stencil lifting up high and positioning like tin fever drew. The only fear I have for high lift is when I accidentally lower it onto my head, but I'm thinking a double lift button like a pinball machine. So Marius, you didn't answer what I had said earlier. What uh, what gantry system, like brand or configuration are you using on yours? Okay, so, so far the simple XY gantry is what people are running with. So then what is, I think it was open builds, yeah. Open builds. Okay, cool. That is what he used. So then which one, Marius? Like the V slot, C beam, open rail. There's like tons of these. And like where do I need to be actually looking on this site?
Yeah, their site's not very good. Used C beam. Because it's like there should be a whole setup of the different like C beam compatible stuff. They have a complete XY gantry. Where? It sucks. <laughs> yeah, this is about as bad. Oh, I saw it. See the link I posted in Discord. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... I, I do agree the not having a... Um, the custom machining part is nice. Last time I checked their website, doesn't sell a lead screw flange. But doesn't this have everything with the... I don't know what you're referring to as the lead screw flange. And Marius, is this what you're is is this what you're talking about that you bought right here? I mean I it says large, so it's big. That is really not that expensive. Three hundred dollars for a pretty massive range of motion here. Like that's actually kind of shocking that that's as cheap as it is so marius you're using this exact kit as is or you pieced yours together and just kind of built it custom because then in theory there's no reason other than space constraints why not to get the big one. I mean, I guess the only, what I don't follow, what parts did you 3D print? Because isn't all of this metal? Or are you saying you did piece it together and 3D printed what? I added two millimeters to the thickness. Because I guess the only thing here that would be interesting is if you go with like the 500 millimeter, we would only need that in one of the axes. Presumably this one would be considered the Y. So we wouldn't need the X to be that wide. So we could just cut, I could just cut that down to make that short. Oh, this, the lead screw has to be. So I guess that's the pain. Oh, you 3D printed all metal parts, so even the rail is 3D printed? Oh, gosh. Dang. Yeah, I won't be <laughs> doing that. So then if they don't sell everything separate, that's kind of a pain in the butt. I'll, maybe I can shoot them like an email or something and see because having a huge X motion is just kind of a waste of space because that's utterly useless. 3D printed all metal parts, not the, oh, the extrusion is not, got it. Oh, it says they, so where's the flange you're talking about? So Marius or James, what flange are you talking about? Because unless they're missing something here, it seems like they have everything. What is an SKP file?
Oh, SketchUp. I have never used SketchUp before. We'll see if Fusion allows it. Post it in AliExpress link in Discord could be another option that has real linear rail and ball screws. So pardon my ignorance, what is going to be the improvement over this? I get that it has screws through it instead of writing on like wheels like this does, but what's the actual like difference there? By flange, I mean a bolt with an extruded lip and holes to mount it to the gantry. What is it? Like, are you saying something additional on here? Or you mean like the bolts that slide into the extrusion? Like the little, whatever they're called. Like on ball screws have no backlash. Linear rail will have no tension that needs to be set. Unlike wheels with eccentric axes needed for preload. Got it. So then 10 for feedback with my eyes, this will work just as good as this. But if it has vision that isn't, like Marius said, active vision, then this will be worse because there will be backlash. Linear rails, assuming properly made ones, offer longevity and pretty much zero slop. Got it. While coating my machine, I used an old stencil. I lowered it so hard by accident that the metal wrapped around the board. Even if it's just plastic, it's super solid. That's pretty funny. Something came up. We'll have to run later, and good luck. Ah, see ya, Heed. Yeah, definitely will catch you up later. Appreciate all of the help, as always. So then, just for giggles, if I wanted to look up the linear rail one in the US, what? Linear rail XY kit or something. Loaded down rails will not say rubber wheels do. Got it. Yeah, I'm not saying one way or another. I'm just curious now. Yeah, and I guess 10 MS CNC if you can find me just not having a uh, uh, AliExpress link if you can find me something in the US like the uh, core like the uh, open builds one. Oh, they sell it on Amazon. Do they sell it in like a preset XY or was that just a single orientation? Man, if only these were freaking powered, that could be really cool. Yeah, everything I'm seeing is just the single, and I know I'm not saying that it's not a minor thing to just add the other axis below this, but it would be nice if it's just all preset. You probably want to buy separate because you need significantly different. I think you meant to say lengths. Yeah, lengths. So then how are we attaching? So with what you sent, how are they actually attaching the X axis to the two Y axis is, are they just tapping a hole in the bottom here, presumably, and then just threading a th screw through to attach the gantry? I'm assuming. I 
I think they have a special plate to attach things. See, yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was worried about. Again, lack of machine shop availability. That kind of scares me. Oh, yeah, here's the Fuyu one. So exactly what you said. And what's funny is price-wise, this would be fairly comparable to this because 300, I would need three of these. So yeah, ballpark about the same price. And if I wanted to go with the longer ones, yeah, it's still about the exact same. Oh, that's only 50 millimeters. So I don't know what the difference. Another link up in Discord. I keep bringing up Fuyu because they actually show a real spec sheet. Oh, here we go. I hate how they have the X axis as being the long one instead of the Y. But I guess at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. Marius, are you using the same rotational plate as you are on this one, on your new one? I know you said it doesn't rotate 360 degrees, but ignoring that, it's basically the same where it's just a spinning dish with a geared tooth and then tin fever and mscnc so something like this you're saying pretty much in every way is better than this which makes sense it doesn't have the wheels it's actually driven on the rail itself but for something like this to where there is no feedback other than my eyes is there actually an improvement using this over this since I don't think flexing is going to be an issue like Marius said he bent the stencil over it and we're putting like five pounds of pressure with the stencil I don't think that that's going to be a huge difference or are you saying that these are just that much better overall that even for something like this it might be worth it Again, I just, I don't have any experience in this, so I'm just curious what, what you guys think. One thing that sucks about this is we're not going to be able to get a step file for anything. Whoa, SketchUp imports are super cool. <laughs> it's like an STL plus all the colors. That's funny. I would use ball screws for my DIY LASIK machine. I'm assuming you will or would use ball screws and then laser machine. So then, yeah, the only thing preventing this or supporting this in the Z direction down is the wheels themselves. So that means these plastic wheels where will bend in theory or am I missing something here? Is that the only thing that supports in this direction? Whereas this has the actual support of the rail that it's sitting on. For a thing where there's little load and not so much action, linear rails would be overkill. The linear rails and ball screws, I think, would have better longevity and lower oil maintenance, but they're probably similar for your application, I think, but a similar price, I like the linear. That makes sense. Marius, yes. So yes to the support. Got it. Okay. I think that all makes sense. And yes, price-wise is pretty much, I mean, comparable-ish. So then what? This has... Their pictures are so far off. It's saying 300 millimeters in the X and 200 millimeters in the Y. This is like four times as long in this direction. And then does that mean we don't actually know which one is 
X and which one is Y. Oh, here. No, oh, it doesn't say. Because, yeah, what, what axis is X and what is Y? Because you obviously can't trust their picture because it's not even remotely to scale. XYZ stage. I think the opening picture is just an overview render. Yes, I agree. But my point is, how do we know what is actually X and what is Y if that's our only picture we have? I know for so many reasons this is a bad idea. But <laughs> what if... What if we build out like a little cantilever plate here that holds the stencil and it extends out the stencil and then it lowers like that? Obviously, it's going to be super wimpy, but if it's held on a rigid plate, maybe by an electromagnet, that would be pretty supportive. Um, no, MSCNC, the reason I, I mean that, why it matters, is because we don't, we don't know which one of these is longer than the other. Ideally, we would rather have this be the long axis, I think. I mean, I guess you're right, it probably doesn't matter, but it still... It, it it still would be nice to know. If 300 millimeters is X and 200 millimeters is Y and the picture shows one axis longer than the other, then that axis is X. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking that this is going to be 300 millimeters. This is going to be 200 millimeters. That's what I'm thinking. It would add a lot of bed. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I was mostly joking with that, but... I guess it could still be kind of funny. In my opinion, ball screws add more complexity than it gives advantages. What complexity does... Whoa. Um, what complexity does this add, Marius? Because my assumption is once we get this, this is going to run the exact same as this, no? I mean, it's still using a linear rail. I mean, it's still using the same uh, stepper motors. But I guess the low pitch, that is true. Is this going to have the precision? Oh, I already saw that this doesn't ship from Prime. Trust me, that was the first thing that I noticed. The technology itself but we're buying it pre-built that's what i'm saying like i would just buy it like this so all of that complexity is already taken care of all we would have to do is drive it which the i guess what i'm saying is with a pre-built one the actual driving and what i'll actually have to be working on there's no difference there at least in in my not sophisticated in this world opinion. Looks like they don't sell XY packages with Prime. Mario says true. Okay, cool. I just wanted to double check. So then... I 
I don't have Amazon over here. I'm so envious. Where are you located, Marius? I actually don't think I've I've known that. AliExpress listing appears to ship via FedEx. Why pay for two long ones when you can pay for two shorter one? I agree, Thomas, Tomas, 100%. But the problem is I don't have an option. <laughs> There's very few kits out there that I'm finding. And to make one custom, I don't know the actual mounting plate that mounts these two pieces together that this part, I don't know if that's something you can buy. Norway. So there's no Amazon in Norway. Go figure. But yes, 100% agree. That's why I was asking about what is X and what is Y, because in the X direction, we need like 10 millimeters of motion. So having potentially 300 is utterly useless. But to do it custom, that's where I guess has the biggest advantage here. Because this would be super easy to come up and get custom size linear rails, do it the exact size that we want, and be good to go. So that's a big plus for this setup. And I guess something that could be interesting for this to accommodate the flex issue in this direction when you're squeegeeing there's nothing to say that we still can't have because we don't need motion in this direction that much just a few millimeters we could literally have a support that is out here like a millimeter below on each side and any time any pressure is down here, it would just nest into that, and then it would support it on those ends. So I think you could do something like that, and that would work pretty well. If you want more rigidity, you add another plate on the bottom. I do not know what you are meaning, where the plate would be and what it would do. If you want, I uh, vote based on the questions on that Amazon page, you can email them and ask for custom sizes. Yes, I did notice that. I vote by a thousand millimeter Y axis, 200 millimeter X axis, then get two, then just get or have laser cut the plate to mount the two. So you are saying do this by these and then just mount it myself, correct? So buy two long ones that would bring the board to me and put the board back, buy the short one for the X and just figure out a way to mount it. Oh, here's the underside. So they're not tapped. Oh, it does have good dimension. So to at least mock something up roughly accurate wouldn't be that hard you may only need a single long one. Oh, so you're saying to do it the same like this so to have the pcb brought this way yeah i mean i guess that's the most intuitive obvious or the the, the cheapest because then there only needs to be one rail yeah i mean i can get on board with that i mean i i one way or another <laughs> It's not going to be that hard to mount this. I guess the one thing I am a little confused about is where are the actual screws that they're using to hold this together? Or is it these two screws go down into here? I guess it has to be, right? Because there's no other way that you can get a screw through there. Or no, it's not, because how does it attach on this side? It's aluminum extrusion. 
No, I get that, but how do you actually have access to the underside to screw anything in here? I would not worry about the mounting plate so much. Any machine shop would handle the milling plate. Check off topic for double plate for more rigidity. Gotcha, okay. I can see that. So then that doubles. Doubles the screws so you would have another plate down there. I would say it's four screws mounting plate from block from top. Then the rail is screwed through the extrusion from the top. Attach one with countersunk holes in the linear to the linear carriage. Then have mounting plate with flange to it that extends further out to access. Guess I see that. It's just, it's hard with so limited pictures here. So then, yeah, I guess to compare pricing, let's say. How long is this? So 300 millimeters. So. I'm trying to think how much motion I would want. So that's 500. Man, 300 on the axis that brings me the PCB. That's almost enough. I mean, that's quite a bit. A thousand would be way too much. I mean, that's that's huge. It that would be bringing it off the table. Do they have like a 400 maybe? They really need to have a better thing here to where you can select like sizes from the same page instead of having to click on all these others. 700. They do have a 400. Daniel Knight, dude, interesting stream. Would be fun to do more mechanical stuff. Sweet. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, man. Have a good one. Okay. So 400 millimeter stroke, and then we would get 100 millimeter why did that just get more expensive? Wasn't the like 200 millimeter stroke like a hundred or eighty seven dollars? I'm confused. <laughs> or are there like different model part things, like FSL and something else? Yeah, didn't these all just get way more expensive? I thought they were 87 bucks. There are different model lines, but most are FSL 40. Okay. So, 100, so that would be th uh, $300, so $482 for this. Oh, so FSL 30 is 80. Okay, got it. So then what is the difference? These are NEMA 23, the others were NEMA 14, got it. So does it really even matter what size motor? Or I guess, do they have a FSL 30 and 400 millimeter? That probably would eliminate. So FSL 30 and 400 millimeter, because it's probably gonna be a moot point.
Yes, it is. Okay, so ignore that. So 300, so 482, so a touch under $500 as compared to 300 and change. So a difference of, size probably doesn't matter, but not sure yet how you would adopt. No, no, I'm, I'm saying just use both together. Let's not, let's not uh, overcomplicate things. It's not that big of a price difference. I was just curious if they had the FSL 30 in both. So we're talking 150, maybe $200 price difference, absolute tops between this and the linear rail setup. So, I mean, from what you guys are saying, it seems like with what Maria said too, once these are already built, the complexity driving them are going to be the same. So then price, this seems to be fine. Like, I mean, I, this, this seems to be the way to go instead of the um, open builds version. They might also be made different size. Got it. I need to put my youngest to bed. Just shoot me a DM or at me in the channel if I can help. Oh, sweet, Marius. I really appreciate you being here. It's the it's nice having the person who inspired all of this as well with Sion having them on the stream. For moving a PCB, NEMA 14 would be more than enough. NEMA 23 would probably shift you. That's funny. So I guess the only thing that having a more powerful or more torquey stepper motor is useful for is one of the thoughts that we had had with a heat was needing the electromagnets to hold the plate when you're going to stencil it. The holding torque of a big NEMA 23 motor, I'm assuming has more than enough torque that I can pull on that squeegee and it's not going to want to slide the rail at all. Is that a correct assumption? Like these are going to be strong enough to where it will stay in place as is. I have to assume because Marius, that's how he's doing it. And this is going to be more secure. Oh yeah, so look, they do have the little mountings. You'd struggle to back drive the screw, whatever the motor. Fantastic, so that is good. You can't move it at all with my NEMA 23s. Okay, perfect. So much for you leaving the stream, you just couldn't help yourself. <laughs> screw in general ball screw a technique make it easier to back drive okay cool that that makes sense oh well there's our answer oh so this is going to be an absolute piece of cake to do so then the way they mount this is they just take off the gantry so they, they just take off the little gantry and then thread through on here. So you might not even really need that much for a mounting plate unless the screws don't align. Tin fever, like I said, that, now I get what you're saying. It's aluminum extrusion. Got it. I don't think the motor will matter when applying the paste. We're talking about positioning the board under the stencil, not holding the stencil. Yes, no, I get it. But isn't it true that the more powerful the motor is, the more it, the more powerful its holding torque is? Like what I'm getting at is when I'm squeegeeing it, there's going to be force wanting to pull the board back towards me. And the more powerful the motor is, the more it's going to resist that, resist that motion. But to Marius's point and to your guys' point, I don't think it's going to be even close to moving it as is. Just conceptually, that's that's what I was getting at. Yes. Okay. Cool. So then we're on the same on the same page there. So yeah, as long as these holes line up with the width here, and even if they don't, yeah, just laser cut an acrylic mounting plate, and then good to go. Between the board and motor, there is a screw. I think mounting adapter plate is still necessary because the holes in linear carriage are blind tapped. Yes, that's what I was thinking. 
The biggest difference you'll notice will be top speed it can achieve before the coils are saturated. Got it. Between the board and the motor, there is a screw which multiplies the torque. Makes sense. Okay, so then let me, someone had said, I think it was 10, that there is a grab cad for this, but it was kind of a pain. So let me see. Also, mounting carriage has 25 millimeter square pour hole pattern, but aluminum extension extrusion is 20 by 40 or 20 millimeters. Okay, so I still need that, but that's that's not the end of the world. I've literally clicked on this before. That's really funny. So this is the 300 millimeter, so let's... Oh, now I see what you mean. Why would they do that? They wouldn't have a stepper motor assembly? Are you kidding me? Well, that's annoying. They do have whole assembly. Okay, I'll just have to see when it pops up. No, I get SolidWorks assembly files there. I do not have SolidWorks anymore. Oh, this is the FSL 30. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, so that is different. Okay. Someone asked about the uh, mounting plate. Oh, so they can give you the model for it. Dang, so their support is freaking fantastic. Tin, how have you used this company Fuyu before, or did you just find them on Amazon? Because for a Chinese company, they seem pretty decent. Like at least with support, that's pretty cool. So then I'll obviously reach out to them and I can hopefully get the step file for their assembly or the uh, FSL 40 and then also the adapter plate to be able to mount multiple of them. I bought a few of their rails for a project but never actually integrated their stuff. I probably did a bunch of research to find the cheapest but still legit. Yeah, it seems like it. That's really cool the uh, questions that they're answering. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Huh. I guess to keep 
dusting crap out. And they have real spec sheets. Yeah, isn't that rare? It is just funny. It's like if we didn't need the rotation, like you could literally make something like this just work as is, like without any other tweaking. <laughs> the only nuisance, again, is having the cantilevered stencil holder there. But you could still find a way to make that work. Yeah, man, they've got tons of these. It's really cool. You could just build a 3D printer using exactly what they have. Okay, but that's kind of annoying how much they keep popping that up, though. I wish they would stop that. Yeah, that's really annoying. All right, so then, cool. So then I think, I think we're at a good spot then. I'll probably stop here just because I need to get those step files. So then next step, I mean, I guess to be fair, while the step files are, oh, 10, you're thinking of finding a rotary table. My assumption was that was going to have to be custom, if not 3D printed something. Because I didn't think that, like, the rotary tables, I thought those were all... I thought those were all controlled or, like, microscope stuff and super expensive. But, yeah, that's... can give it another... 10 minutes or so. Why am I looking on YouTube? I meant to go to Amazon. Because, yeah, my assumption was this was still going to have to be custom. But obviously, if we can find one... That would be amazing. Yeah, the problem with the rotary table for milling machines is, at least from what I'm seeing, is they're all manual. And that sucker's... I mean, I guess weight doesn't matter now that we're using the uh, linear rails instead of the carriage. Because yeah, all of these are manual. I mean, I know you can get a conversion kit, but... Maybe an off-the-shelf table that 3D printed a stepper, but again, this is overkill. Table alone will be the heaviest part. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Now I meant rotational. Oh, actually, rotary. Posted link in Discord. Yeah, the problem is, though, with that being manual, that eliminates the possibility of this being computer-controlled in the future. So I think I kind of want to keep everything stepper motor-controlled, at least for now, just to give that option. Yeah, they're all CNC, so I wonder then this will get ugly price-wise, but I can look up microscope. And I guess the other problem with these is these aren't going to be these aren't going to be able to withstand that much force downwards because that's not what they're made for at least. Oh. Well, looky here. 280 bucks, that's not that outrageous. I know it need to be stepper controlled, but I think for cost, you may have to just 3D print. Oh, an adapter. I did not know that's what you meant. 
that makes more sense. So you would just disconnect the handle there and then throw on a stepper. Got it. Yes, that makes total sense. And then this is obviously built to withstand that force downwards. That probably makes more sense than this because, yeah, this is not made to have downward force. But it still is funny that these are actually, some of them are cheap. Another link. Huh. So what actually... What actually rotates? This whole thing moves like a flag, doesn't it? I don't think that gives us the rotation we want. Unless I'm missing it. Yeah, because I think it spins around that shaft. So they're calling it a fourth axis. I assume it's the center brass part designed to have a shaft in the brass piece in the middle. Oh, it gears it. Oh, so this whole plate is a gearing system that turns that. Got it. Yeah, that would still need a bunch of custom crap to it. I don't think that saves us that much. Yeah, because the problem is also, yeah, like the for a CNC, the rotational axis is going to be in the wrong plane for what we need, at least with the mounting holes. Yeah, just like this. It's going to be basically a lathe where we would need it to be a lathe sticking straight upwards. So then, yeah, maybe the best approach is to do something like this. Yeah, so I mean, at different prices, there's tons of these. And I know the one on Amp. Oh, this is the one on eBay. Basically the same thing, same price, too. So then this mounts to the carriage. This would get its own custom plate deal, which could just be as simple as an acrylic sheet or better an aluminum plate which then has however we're going to mount the PCB to it presumably those four bolts can be removed and then hopefully there's some easy to access gear system that we can throw a stepper motor on I like that if you look at the way the hand wheel attaches there might just be a shaft with a set screw Oh, I see that. You're right. As long as that unscrews, oh, that could be unbelievably easy. Oh, and they use a T-slot, so that would be easy to attach. Man, really good idea. This this is a much better option than what I was thinking. Cool. So then basically I need to, yeah, I mean, regardless of what they say with the step file, order this one and then order the rails and then start playing around with that with the plate and what's cool is in a way that almost gets the majority quality of lowest cost chinese rotary table <laughs> yeah we'll see about that that is true. We'd have to see if it's even fine enough, but at least it's a start. And then, yeah, what's cool with just ordering those is realistically the hardest part of this whole thing we can start working on with literally just those kind of roughed in because lifting the stencil up and down, that's obviously super, super easy, at least compared to all of this.
All right, well, cool. Yeah, I think we got a ton accomplished here. So yeah, I'll plan on probably next week doing a stream, probably with all of these here. So I'll need to figure out a better way to film and be able to have a setup to where you can see things. But yeah, that'll be sweet. For mill turn, that table would be rather a bad choice, but we're not talking about fast rotation. Yes, I hope we are not doing fast and constant rotation. That would be some wonk, wonky, wacky, terrible stencil printer. But cool, guys. I really appreciate the help. It is quite obvious that I would not be able to be getting this far without, uh, without some guidance. So I do appreciate that. So yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed. And of course, if you're not in the Discord channel, go ahead and join. That's where we're going to be talking about all of this in the time in between the streams. But if not, I will catch everybody later. I will talk to you then. Have a good one, guys. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye.